F1 champion just raced in the NASCAR Cup Series, and this is how he did. An F1 legend just competed in a NASCAR race on Sunday, and he revealed some disappointments and everything that surprised him about NASCAR racing. But how did he perform, really, and why did he forget how to start a car on the first day? Let's go find out, and while you're at it, please subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. On Sunday, March 26th, the stars of NASCAR left it all out on the track of Echo Park Texas Grand Prix at Circuit of the Americas, or CODA. It was NASCAR's first road course race of the year 2023. The race saw a lot of noteworthy and jaw-dropping moments that have been top of the headlines in sports media since. For example, the winner of the race, Tyler Reddick, could only be decided after a three-overtime thriller. This meant that a race that was supposed to only cover 68 laps was extended to 75. 68 or 75, it didn't matter to Reddick, who just bagged his fourth career win. Another significant moment in the race was made by Ty Gibbs, who became the highest finishing rookie in NASCAR history by finishing ninth for the second week in a row. And then we have the reason for this video in the first place, Jensen Button. But before we talk about his performance and what he thinks of NASCAR and how it is different than Formula One, who the heck is Jensen Button? And why should your humble self care about him at all? Well, take it from me when I say that Button is a pretty awesome dude. He was born on January 19, 1980 in Froome, Somerset, England, and from a young age he had a love for racing, which started with karting when he was just eight years old. By the age of 18, he had moved on to car racing, competing in the British Formula Ford Championship. Button is a British racing driver who's been tearing up the tracks for over two decades. His Formula One World Championship career spanned from 2000 to 2017. His first race was the 2000 Australian F1 GP, and his last was the 2017 Monaco F1 GP. Within this period, he generated for himself a modest resume, with 15 Grand Prix wins in 309 races, a Formula One World Championship under his belt, and a bunch of other racing titles to his name. But that's not all. Jensen is also known for his super cool personality and chill demeanor. He's got this suave, laid-back vibe that makes him one of the most likable drivers on the circuit. Off the track, Jensen is a bit of a playboy. He's been linked to some seriously beautiful ladies, and he's not shy about showing off his ripped bod on social media. He's also a big fan of partying and enjoying the finer things in life. I mean, who wouldn't be when you're a millionaire F1 driver, right? Nevertheless, he's also been in serious relationships and was finally married again after his divorce many years ago. After his F1 career, he involved himself in various motorsport-related activities, including running his team in Japan's Super GT Series, where he won the 2018 Japan Super GT Series GT500 Class Season Championship. This was his first title as a sports car racer. He also raced in off-road endurance racing in 2019 in the Baja 1000 and Mint 400 races. And to further prove he could succeed outside F1, he decides to race stock cars in NASCAR. Jensen announced earlier in March 2023 that he would be racing in three NASCAR Cup Series races for Rick Ware Racing behind the number 15 Ford wheels. Part of his statement read, Obviously, racing a Cup car is very different than what I'm used to. It's a lot heavier with a lot less power and basically no downforce. It's got a sequential gearbox where you need to blip the throttle, so there's lots of stuff to learn in a very short space of time. But I just get excited about that new challenge, and when I throw myself into something, I am 100% in. He is scheduled to race in the Chicago Street Race on July 2nd and the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Road Course on August 13th, 2023. His first race, which he just competed in yesterday, was the Circuit of the Americas, CODA, in Austin, Texas. In his own words, he had called the performance on Sunday 40% silly, saying, quote, I have to say I enjoyed about 60% of the race. 40% of it felt a bit silly, the amount we were hitting each other. But what happened in the race, and how did Button do? Well, for Button, this was not the first time he would be racing in the Circuit of the Americas. When he was still an F1 driver, he drove at the COTA five times, attaining a best place of fifth in 2012. So with that much familiarity, there shouldn't be any problem whatsoever, right? Well, not so much. First, NASCAR cars are different from F1 cars. In fact, to differentiate between NASCAR and F1 cars is like comparing a cheetah to a rhinoceros. They're both fast, but in very different ways. First off, F1 cars are sleek, open-wheeled, aerodynamic machines that look like they were designed by a team of rocket scientists. And let's be honest, they probably were. These babies are all about speed and precision, with engines that can rev up to 15,000 RPMs and tires that could stick to a ceiling if you let them. They're designed to hug the road and take tight turns with ease. And the drivers? They're like the James Bonds of the racing world. Suave, skilled, and always up for a challenge. On the other hand, NASCAR racing is like your favorite dive bar. It's loud, rowdy, and full of energy. The cars are big, powerful, and built to go fast in both curved and straight lines. And the drivers? They're more like cowboys. Tough, gritty, not afraid to get a little dirty. Now, don't get me wrong. Both F1 and NASCAR are incredibly impressive in their ways. But if you want to see drivers pushing the limits of what's possible in terms of speed and agility, then F1 is the way to go. And if you want to see cars that are more durable than a Nokia phone from the 90s, then NASCAR is your jam. 
In a nutshell, NASCAR demands you to be really tough out there, and it looked like Jensen wasn't tough enough on the tracks. He had a lot to say about NASCAR, but first, he revealed that the first time he tried to operate the stock car was a huge chore for him, saying, I, I forgot how to start the car, which was interesting. So I'm, they pushed the car back, and I'm like, it won't start. And I was okay, there's a few other switches that I had to put up. Um, but then it was okay. Button said he suffered this initial immobility because he said the gearbox was different in terms of the sequence, which was manual instead of the automatic he was used to. But he eventually got used to it and was ready to race. He began the race in the 24th position and struggled in and out of the top 20 while trying to manage the heat and contact he was receiving that he never had before. He was able to snatch the 15th position as stage 1 reached its end. Then he lost his spot and fell outside the top 20 at some point and could only bounce back by taking the 20th position during overtime. But at the end of the entire race, Button finished in the 18th position. To be fair, this was a good result for the F1 champion. He had won ahead of racers like Bubba Wallace and Jimmy Johnson who have been in NASCAR for a while. Additionally, he had also done better than fellow former F1 driver Kimi Raikkonen, who finished 27th. Not a bad first race, in my opinion. As for Jensen, his opinions about his performance in NASCAR had a lot of things that were headline-worthy. Speaking to Jared Haas of Front Stretch, he began by saying, It was an emotional roller coaster. The first thing was terrible. I mean, I must have been last by the end of it. And I was just like, everyone go. I need to just drive. I need to find a rhythm because I've never gone through a corner too wide so often. <laughs> and trying to you know, place my car in the right place. I just got it wrong every time. But he was happy to find a bit of rhythm on the way and happier to have passed a few cars. But commenting on all the contact he was getting from other drivers, he said, In turn one, I would have an inch overlap and get whacked. Luckily, it didn't spin me around, and on the exit, I gave them a big whack back. The revenge is enjoyable, but there's points when it feels that we could do better. The action is amazing, don't get me wrong. He also complained about the heat. I was so hot, I thought I was going to faint and the car would be sick, so I stopped twice. And of course, speaking about how the drivers drove, he admitted to finding their speed and car placement impressive, but was disappointed in other things. Very impressive. Some other things? <laughs> a little bit disappointing. <laughs> but overall, he was happy about his resilience, which put him in the top 20 despite all the craziness that transpired on the tracks. When asked what he planned to do for the next race in July, he just said he wanted to rest and see his wife and kids. So let's let Button relax for now, and I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.